Well, hey, hey, we made it to Hockey Jersey Thursday, everybody. I know it's exciting. You guys look forward to Hockey Jersey Thursday every week. I know I do. Anyway, um, yeah, it's Thursday. Um, while you're watching this bell ringer, you're either going to or you will have already seen Kevin Burt perform today at school, which was always one of our uh, favorite events when uh, he comes and performs his uh, his blues his blues routine. He's very good. And um, yeah, we're getting close right to the end of the quarter. The end of the quarter is next Friday. So a week from Friday, the quarter ends and that'll be the drop dead date on anything that's late, especially labs. Some of you are missing labs, missing labs, right? And um, yeah, let's talk about a few things. Let's talk about epigenetics and gene switches today. Mr. Kovacs Class. It's Mr. Kovacs Class. You might learn how to talk. It's Mr. Kovacs Class. He's interested too. It's Mr. Kovacs Class. And he's super cool. It's Mr. Kovacs Class. Your phenotype is the way you look, right? It's all of your traits. And of course, they're determined by genes. But it also makes sense that they're affected by the environment. Like, for example, um, you could have the genes to grow to be really tall, but if you don't eat enough food, you don't get enough food, you're never going to have the tall phenotype, no matter what genes you have. Right? So genes and environment kind of work together. And um, it's not new or surprising to think that, but, it, but it's how they work together and what we're going to focus on today. And if you think about... Um, development, right? Fertilization, you have a zygote, then it makes more cells, it becomes uh, an embryo, or it becomes a blast, uh, yeah, morula, then a blastula, here it is a blastula, then it becomes an embryo, finally an embryo, right? During that time in the cell's lives, those cells are constantly changing what they're going to do, right? Some cells are going to become the eyeball cells, well, some become the brain cells, some become leg cells, some become tail cells, Etc. Some become the heart, right? How do they know what to do? It all has to do with what we call gene switches. Switches. So during development, there are little switches that turn on some genes and turn off other genes in various cells. And if you pull the right switches at the right time, you get this nice development of a baby. Okay? But if you make a mistake or if you start pulling the wrong switches at the wrong times, you get abnormalities regardless of what the genes are, right? We call them gene switches, right? They're switched on, they do what's called transcription, right? You read the gene. When they're switched off, they don't. Gene switches, okay? Usually gene switches are proteins that are made, we call them inducer proteins, and they bind to other proteins that activate genes to make new proteins, right? It's like a, a switch. It's like a light switch, if you think of it that way. And in some regards, right, it takes one gene switch to switch the next gene, which that may in turn to make a gene switch, which makes another gene switch, which makes another. And if you switch them at the right time, it's like turning on light, you'll turn on all the lights at the right time and you'll get a baby. But if you switch them at the wrong time, you'll get something weird, like a leg growing out of your face. Yeah, these, these are fruit flies that have been, um, had their gene switches mutated on purpose as an experiment to see what would happen. And you'd see that they, right, they, you change the genetic switch, you get a different result, a different outcome. Legs in place of antenna, by, for example, or two sets of wings instead of one, those kinds of things. We see this in people too, with various genetic disorders, which have to do with switching right? Switching. Now, what's interesting to me is that there's some switches that come from within, within the DNA itself, but there's some switches that come from without. We call them environmental switches, right? Or environmental uh, stimulators. Like a good example is Himalayan rabbits. Um, temperature 
affects the switching on and off of melanin, right? When it's warm, the switch is off. When it's cold, the switch is on, right? And so as temperatures change, these guys change their look because they turn on and off genes at different times. This with a lot of animals, we see this with a lot of animals around here, right? That change their fur color for the winter, right? They're actually switching on and off genes based on an environmental factor. It could be the amount of light, it could be the temperature, those kinds of things, right? Look how cute that ermine is. Um, that's not so foreign to us either, right? I mean, sun tans, sun tans are basically gene switches to turn melanocytes on to make more melanin. And melanin scatters light, right? Of course, you can only handle so much light. The more melanin you have in your skin, the more light you can handle before you get burned, usually, usually, right? That's why people with very fair skin don't make a lot of melanocytes, they'll make a lot of melanin, they're more prone to sunburns, right? But even fair-skinned people can get darker when they tan because the light stimulates the production of melanin. It's a switch. Cool about all of this is that epigenetics is the study of these switches and how environment affects the switches. And really, without getting into the details right now, but um, these switches can be, gene switches can be turned on and off and they can be blocked from being turned on or off as well by environmental factors. And what's really cool about this is that those gene switches can be turned on and off and then inherited, right? So the genes aren't changed, just whether or not they can switch on or off is changed. And that can be inherited, passed down from parents to offspring. And that's kind of interesting to think that it's not all just what genes you get, it's what gene switches you had turned on and what things your parents might have done um, will affect actually you, which is kind of crazy to think. Talk a little bit more about epigenetics in class today. You'll watch, of course, Amoeba Sisters video about it. And um, yeah, so understand that nature, right? Nature and nurture are both essential. That is, your genes are essential to what you look like but so is the environment you grow up in. They both have an impact.